Hi folks, Vince here. In today's video, we'll continue to push the 8L for science, to develop feeds and speeds, and for your entertainment. We'll be using a few of the more common materials. Aluminum 6061, steel 4140 pre-hard, brass 360, and I have some titanium CP2 that we can have a little fun with. We'll also use a couple different diameters to see how the machine acts, what changes, and the limitations, whether it be from the tools, the setup, or the machine. Let's break some chips. Now we're gonna talk about depths of cut and a good place to start. This is mostly insert dependent and it's based off the nose radius of the insert. We're using a CCMT2 1.51, which has a nose radius of 164. That's a little bit above 15 thou. To create a nice chip and to ensure all the forces are going in the right direction, take a roughing depth of cut of at least one half to two thirds the nose radius. For finishing, it's okay to go a little bit lighter with about one third the nose radius. The nose radius also dictates how far we can push the feed rate. If you push the feed rate too far, you're essentially creating a thread on the surface and that's no good for a surface finish. So the maximum allowable feed per rev is around 15 thou, which is fine because in practice I found that for roughing aluminum, the 8L really, really likes around 8 thou per rev and breaks a nice chip. Before we start getting into the capabilities of this machine, we should probably go over some of the limitations and some of the issues I've had. One of the main issues I've had was with this quick change tool post moving, the angle of it moving, and whenever that happens, you actually have to reset the offset of your tools because the angle will actually change the distance of the tool to the workpiece. Stock, this machine comes with these little M5 set screws to hold the angle of this quick change tool post along with this small bolt through the middle. What I ended up doing was replacing those with some M5 button head bolts and also used a jam nut. That way I could keep pressure on these bolts and the quick change tool post didn't move nearly as much as they did with just the stock set screws. The next thing we're going to talk about is your work holding and the kind of limitations that you'll have depending on what you choose to use. The 8L lathe spindle uses a 5C collet and basically the limitations of that is your diameter I believe it'll hold about a one and a sixteenth of an inch material to actually be able to pass through the collet. The other option is the three jaw chuck, which is basically a three jaw chuck adapted to a 5C collet. The 5C by itself can either use high or low gear, where if you use the three jaw chuck, you're basically capped at low gear, which is 2500 RPM max. Also, I have had some rigidity issues using the three jaw chuck when parting off in harder materials like steel. If I can run the material in the 5C call, I will, because this machine, given its horsepower and size, it just really likes light and fast cuts. One of the most common questions I get asked is, what's the power really like? And how well does it act with turning larger diameters? When your diameter starts getting above about one and a half inches, you have to really cut back on your depths of cut, and that can make breaking a chip very hard. Also, if you start running the line of where your spindle is going to stall or not. For the tooling, I've actually been extremely happy and haven't really had any issues with uh, the exception of a couple small little things. The inserts that I usually use are that general CC MT2. 1.51 and I found the tool off to be pretty good. You can push them pretty hard and you don't have to worry about them uh, chipping out because they have a nice generous radius, 164th. If you watched the previous 8L video on ID boring and threading, you might have seen me modify this tool holder for a set screw. What that does is it prevents this tool from rotating and it allows the index much easier. Also, I did explode the parting tool. I think one of the reasons why that happened was because the insert is so wide, these are about an eighth of an inch, and that's just a lot of cutting tool pressure. There's a lot of power going on, and when I did get good results, I used pecking. The tool that I really like to use for parting is this Sandvik tool. It has a round insert, so it's actually good for outside profiling and adaptive roughing as well. It's much thinner, so there's less tool pressure, and it works very well in harder steels and titanium, stuff like that. For my aluminum feeds and speeds, I usually kick my SFM to about 600. And even though I know that's a little bit low for carbide, finishes have been great, so I leave it there. On this facing cut, 20 thou off the front, 2 thou feed per rev because it's an aesthetic cut. And I have coolant going on this, so you can't really see much. Aluminum just reacts much better to cutting with coolant. 
Now let's talk about the roughing. This is the meat and potatoes of lathing. Let's start off with this smaller material and I'm gonna show you the easy way to break a chip. You can actually use Fusion to run pecking and that'll mechanically break up the chip rather than relying on the chip thickness, the chip breaker, geometry or insert to break the chip for you. This helps on smaller material when you don't really need to push it too hard and you don't wanna to put too much force into the workpiece. Next, we'll step up to a little bit larger material. This is a one inch diameter piece of stock in a 5C collet. This is the go-to roughing recipe for the 8L in aluminum with this tool and this insert. And we're running a 30 thou depth of cut with an 8 thou feed per rev. And as you can see, the chips break very nice and easily. Even though they are not the nice C's and 6's that you always hear about, they're definitely better than a long stringy chip. You could try feeding a little bit harder, but running dry for these videos, this is about as far as I wanted to push it. The last thing we're gonna go over is cutting large diameter stock. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, it was not the most fun thing that I've done. You have to use a three jaw chuck, which means you're stuck in low gear up to 2,500 RPM only. With this insert, I couldn't really push it. The machine didn't really have the power there to break a chip and it's just a lot of stringy chips. So if you want to run bigger stock, I would recommend getting a aluminum specific insert that has a smaller nose radius, therefore you can take lower depths of cut and push it harder to see if you can break a chip. Next up is some 4140. We run this at 600 SFM, 20 thou axial with a 2 thou feed per rev and finish just comes out beautiful. For the roughing, I drop down the SFM just a little bit because we're taking away quite a bit of material and I run a radial depth of cut of 30 thou, a feed per rev of 6 thou, which is a little bit less than my aluminum recipe, and it still breaks a nice chip. Still not the Caesar 6s, but definitely not a big stringy mess that you have to worry about. And big steel in this little machine. Can it do it? It can. Can you push it too hard? Eh, I mean, that's debatable. At one point, the RPM does drop. The machine does struggle a little bit. Just know that you can't take the same big, heavy roughing cut as you can with the 5C collet and a smaller diameter stock. It can make a good surface finish, but it can make some stringy chips as well, so be prepared for that. The next material we'll be trying to break a chip in is Brass 360. Now I know a lot of people love to cut this stuff on lathes, but I haven't really had the chance to make a lot of parts in this material. But let's see the performance with this 8L and roughing. Brass is really nice because it's a short chipping material and it's beautiful when you slow down the feed per rev and just put a mirror finish on it. And I do like to run coolant with brass as well. I have found a better surface finish every time. And last but not least, some titanium. This is a CP2 bar, three quarter inch diameter. First thing I'm gonna say is titanium does not like being cut without coolant. So I'm actually gonna use the Sandvik grooming tool. It has a round button insert because it's really good with side to side cuts like adaptive roughing that you can enable in Fusion 360. Because I'm not running coolant, I'm not running this very aggressive. And because there is side to side cutting and I don't believe this tool is that strong side to side with the way it holds its insert, I'm pretty conservative. As you can see, it does not break a chip. There is a big titanium's bird nest, but surface finish is really nice. I probably should have had a little bit lighter finish cut, but that's okay. Next time. I hope you guys enjoyed those clips. In my opinion, the 8L is a very capable lathe. I've been able to cut aggressively and efficiently and almost any material as long as it fit in a 5C collet. You can cut larger stock with the three jaw, but you just have to take into account those limitations of the RPM, the rigidity, and the spindle power. Thanks for watching. I hope that answered some questions and I hope this information will help somebody out. See you next time.